All right, folks, so today we've got another quick how-to video, and today we're going to be taking a look at the serial port SD card adapter for the Dreamcast and the DreamShell software. So what this is is an adapter and software which will allow you to use an SD card to boot software on your Dreamcast. So very similar to the GDMU, although this is plug and play, so you really don't need to do anything other than just set an SD card up. So we'll walk through that process. So taking a look here, I actually picked up a hard copy of DreamShell on a CD. Though you can find this software online, and I'll show you where this is in a couple of minutes, if you wanted to burn your own CD. And obviously, as it says there, this is DreamShell version 4.0. So along with the CD came this handy dandy little adapter. And this is the Dreamcast serial port SD card adapter. So you can see there on the top, you've just got the Dreamcast logo, and there's a little access LED. And you can see the plug here. This is what goes into the serial port. And then on the other end, you've got a standard SD card slot and a micro SD card slot. So pretty straightforward. All right, so real quick, I'll just show you how this plugs into the Dreamcast. So here's the Dreamcast. And obviously, if you look on the back of the console, right underneath the power port, you'll see the serial port. And it's literally as simple as just plugging this in. So as far as mods go, it's pretty straightforward. So now we've got that installed, what we're going to do is pop the SD card into the PC and get that all set up. So the first thing you're going to need to do is format the SD card to FAT32. And since this SD card is just 32 gig, it should allow me just to format it straight as FAT32 within Windows. So what we're going to do is right click on the SD card. Scroll down and click on Format. Double check to make sure that it is the correct drive and that FAT32 is selected. And then we're going to hit Start. Obviously, it's going to prompt you to let you know that everything's going to be deleted. So just click OK. And then once that's done, once again, just click OK. Clear the prompt. And then you can hit Close. So now the SD card's done formatting, we're actually going to need to put some software on it. And even though I have a CD with DreamShell already burnt on it, we also need to add pretty much the same files onto the SD card. So we're going to head over to the DC Swap website, and I'll leave a link in the description below. And then we're going to click on the download link for DreamShell 4.0 plus bootloader. So once that's done downloading, just head over to wherever your downloads go. So mine's just in my downloads folder. So we'll open that up real quick. And you'll see that there's a zip folder that's been downloaded and this contains all the files that we need. So we're just gonna open that up real quick. And then we're gonna extract everything that's in that folder over to the root of the SD card. So just highlight everything. And drag and drop into the SD card. And this takes just a couple of seconds to copy over. So at this point, you can actually add games to the SD card. So you can see here, I've got Capcom versus SNK2 sitting on my desktop. What I'm going to do is take that folder and drag and drop that over to the root of the SD card as well. You may get an error when you start copying it over, but just hit yes and just wait for the files to copy. Once that's done, we're all done on the computer, and we can actually take the SD card out and drop it into the SD card adapter, and we'll fire up the Dreamcast and see how it works. So here we are on the main Dreamcast menu, and I'm gonna drop the CD into the drive and close the drive door. So you can see here the disk is being checked. And off it goes. So as you can see, this boots up just like any other Dreamcast game. Obviously, you've got the Dream Show logo there on the bottom of the Sega Splash screen. And then it takes just a couple of seconds to go through its boot sequence. And then we're into Dream Show. Okay, so within Dream Show, you do have a couple of different things you can do. I'm really only going to be taking a look at the ISO loader today. So all you need to do is navigate over to the ISO loader icon. Hit the A button. 
and then you'll see the main ISO loader screen. So we're going to select SD at the top of the menu. And I did put a couple of other games on here as well as Capcom vs SNK. So first we're going to take a look at Fighting Vipers 2. So we just scroll down and select Fighting Vipers 2. And you'll see the game go into its load sequence. Pretty much as you'd expect. Now while I was researching this, I did read that there were some limitations with the software that could run through the SD card adapter in the serial port. So the reason for this is that the data transfer rates on the serial port is actually less than that of the GD-ROM drive itself. So on data heavy games that require a stream of information, it actually gets bottlenecked a little bit. So it does run a little bit slower. So this is the reason I wanted to put a couple of games on here just to take a look and see how they ran. So here we are, obviously you can see Fighting Vipers is booting up and it's playing exactly as you would expect it to. Although if you've played a standard version of Fighting Vipers, you'll know that the characters actually appear on this player select screen and you can see them loading, but they are loading really, really slowly. So that, like I say, is a data transfer issue. But the game is loading and playing without too many issues. It definitely feels a little bit sluggish as opposed to playing the game on a standard GD-ROM. But if this is the only option you've got, it's definitely passable. So Fighting Vipers 2 isn't too bad, but I did also want to show you what Capcom vs SNK 2 looks like. The game loads up fine, however, when you get into the game itself, you'll hear some audio glitches, actually a lot of audio glitches, and the gameplay is choppy to say the very least. Again, it's playable, but this one runs a lot worse than Fighting Vipers 2. So, depending on the game, obviously your mileage may vary, but I would definitely say that the SD card adapter works. I'd probably use it more for homebrew stuff rather than actual retail games. If you are looking for an ODE solution, this is definitely not going to replace the GDMU or the Terra Onion mode, which will both play retail games perfectly. But like I said, if you're looking to play homebrew games, I think this will work out just fine. So that's the quick setup for the Serial Port SD card adapter and Dream Shell for the Sega Dreamcast. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please drop us a like and also consider subscribing. It's really helping the channel grow. And also, don't forget to check us out on Twitter. Thanks for watching.